All right, I'm re-recording this because the original uh, was lost somehow on YouTube, but here's the third example. So uh, we're picking up off from the uh, War of the Worlds scene. Uh, one important concept, too, to consider is that the author may be wrong. And some people kind of initially think that that's crazy, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about the author as being a human, right? The author may be influenced by personal prejudices, cultural biases, any kind of traditional or contemporary belief, right? So when you think about it, you people can create something and have unintentional meaning. Just like if, when we're in conversation, I can mean to say one thing, but accidentally, you know, have a different effect. And so I like to use this example because this is a good ad because it doesn't involve a lot of overthinking. It, it, a lot of people gut react to this. So, in the case that I'm just about to show you, the PR designer was just ignorant, was just not thinking about implications. This caused a huge amount of controversy. So there's the ad right there. No matter who's your Valentine, surprise them with tickets to the game. And of course we have a nice big heart, two tickets for $25. We have a man and a shirtless boy. And then Illinois versus Penn State, and of course Penn State she probably shouldn't be anywhere uh, near uh, shirtless boys uh, in an ad. And then Thursday, February 21st, to purchase, click here and enter the promo code VDAY. So, what's happening here? This caused a huge controversy because people who didn't understand the context of the photo looked at this and, and w were appalled because visually, and I think we have enough textual and visual evidence here, people really interpreted this as, as some kind of weird pedophilia thing, right? Because no matter who's your valentine, so that's kind of this atypical idea, right? There's a huge heart next to this, the man and the child, right? And then we have Penn State, so if you know what happens with Penn State, right there, there that of course adds even more fuel to this uh, gross vibe here. And, and so it's just awkwardly and unintentionally weird. Of course, the real context is just, it's a picture of Coach Grochi and his son, right? Um, oh, I don't know why that's Grochi's, right? The picture of Coach uh, Grochi and his son, right, taken after victory over Indiana. And so it was a very popular photo that was kind of passed around internally between the provost and the coach and all that stuff. And then it turned into this thing that we see before us. And of course, the problem is that subtext is more than just a, a, a coach and his son, right? Because of all the visual cues, right, and all the all the textual cues, right, it, it, it just bespeaks of a kind of a weird vibe here, right? And again, you know, I don't think the audience who interpreted this, especially the college students who interpreted this as weird, I don't think they have any kind of, you know, misinterpretation here. I think it, it can, that subtext is there. And so the problem, of course, is that the author can be wrong. And the author, again, has unintentional ignorances, right? Um, naivete, what have you. But when you put together things, you always have to think about the implications, the subtext. This is a good example of the opposite of that previous one. The previous one, I think, again, people can have enough evidence to say, man, that's a weird ad. Here, and, and you might already be aware of this controversy, this is Mohamed Mehdi Ozani as the devil in History Channel, the Bible. Well, it may look like someone um, who has, you know, moon powers, right? Someone very special. Uh, you know, it may look familiar with, of course, Obama. Right. And so many people interpreted that way. And so they were calling whether, you know, they liked Obama or not. They were calling the History Channel, oh, you know, History Channel is in favor of showing Obama as the devil and blah, 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 and, and all this all this sort of, of uh, negative feedback. Well, the History Channel had to actually uh, make a statement, and here's their statement. History Channel has the highest respect for President Obama. The series was produced with an international and diverse cast of respected actors. It's unfortunate that anyone made this false connection. History is the Bible, is meant to enlighten people on its rich stories and deep history. I like to use this example, because as I said, it's the opposite of the previous ad, where 
in this case, people are reading too much into it. Why? Because of just coincidence, right? Mohamed Medio Azani, you might not be familiar with him, but he's an enormously internationally famous actor. He's played the devil several times. He's had numerous roles. I think he's in almost, I think, 200 films or something like that. Like he, He's a huge international actor. And this is, again, just a coincidence, right? This, you know, you really, really have no real evidence of just, you know, the History Channel specifically asking for Hosani because he looks like the devil. And, oh, excuse me, he look, doesn't look like the devil. He looks like Obama, right? And so, you know, that's just a coincidence, right? And I think this is a good example where there's not enough textual evidence to say, oh yes, but you see, the History Channel is trying to call Obama the devil. Um, but again, Glenn Beck and several people, you know, whether famous or non-famous, right, really, you know, you know, found this to be the case. But again, there's no real textual evidence for there. This is a good example of reading too much into it, which we should always be careful of. Right? You never want to read too much into the subtext, right? You still need evidence. You still need logic. The last example, and it deals with plagiarism as well as, again, another issue of probably unintentional racism. We have the two t-shirts. The one on your left is Mark by Mark Jacobs t-shirt. The one on your right is Screwdriver, uh, Boots and Braces. And again, just pretend that you were fashion designer teachers, right? Would you, let's say Screwdriver submitted the design and then the other person, right? You would, you would assume some kind of copying has been uh, done because they look a little bit too similar. Well, as I said, this is a $68 t-shirt, which automatically I take issue with. Um, I don't know which is more offensive, plagiarism or charging me $68 for a t-shirt. Uh, I find both of them pretty morally reprehensible. However, I guess other people don't. The right, as I said, is boots and braces. If you don't know who screwdriver is good for you that that's awesome <laughs> yeah as you shouldn't uh... The, this is a nineteen eighty seven twelve inch from Sh screwdriver one of the first white power rock groups featured an illustration of combat boots soles up on its cover this has now become a symbol for neo-nazism so screwdriver obviously came first mark mark jacobs i should have had the date but i want to say this shirt came out about six maybe five years ago uh, maybe it's not even that late According to Mark by Mark Jacobs, the t-shirt's design was just an unfortunate coincidence. Well, I don't think it was a coincidence at all. I think that they didn't realize that it was a racist symbol, but I think they saw some kind of, I, I guarantee you, someone saw a, a kid with a shirt, and was like, ooh, that's a good design, right? Or they thought it was some kind of military thing, and thought that they could do like kind of a parody of it or, or some sort um, and they didn't realize again implication so again here's a good example of just the author whether it's a plagiarizer or just someone who didn't recognize that or it's just again a weird coincidence but we have an issue of, of something that's askew and the author's to blame and again I don't think Mark or Mark Jacobs is anywhere attempting to promote neo-nazism I just think someone was stupid you know someone either plagiarized or someone just thought you know thought of an image that uh, you know again they could have seen with army or they could have seen with you know screwdriver not knowing what it was and and ripped it off right and so again you know that something is askew there but people, of course, accused Mark by Mark Jacobs of being anti-Semitic and all sorts of things. And I don't think Mark by Mark Jacobs is. I think they're just a, you know, jackass company charging people $68 for T-shirts. So, again, you know, we have to be cautious, right? We have to be responsible when we're analyzing. We should analyze. We, we sh and, and, again, an and analyzing is not nitpicking. That's one thing I hate when people say, oh, you know, people are, you know, n just nitpicking. No, uh, when, you know, for example, the, um, and again, the, the basketball ad is a good example. No, people aren't nitpicking. You know, there is a kid who is shirtless. There's an old man yelling at him. There's a heart next to him. There's a, there's the tagline saying, no matter who's your valentine. You know, they have every right. People who interpreted that as weird have every right to do so because it is weird. You know, we could find the visual and textual evidence for that interpretation. The other cases, it is examples of overreading, right? Ozani was not cast because he somewhat looks like Obama, right? An older version of Obama, you know. And and so that's why we have to be careful. In, what's important is the analytical process helps us to uncover hidden meanings.
hidden truths, hidden explanations, without making any judgments necessarily. We, d we could go to that step, but we should remain as objective as possible. We should strive, to, well, again, we have a brain, you know, and that organ is awesome. And so we should try to be as logical and objective as possible. Analysis helps us to deconstruct the complex world in an attempt to gain a better understanding of the world around us. And that's the whole purpose. You know, what does a TV, you know, reality TV show mean? What are our shows trying to tell us about our culture, about ourselves? What are movies trying to tell us about our culture, about who we are, right? Or where our culture is going? You know, every piece of art, whether it's Fast and the Furious or, you know, um, The Fault in Our Stars or, you know, um, American Soldier or American Sniper, right? They're all reflections of our American ideals, our, our human ideas, philosophies, all sorts of things. And so we really need to, again, use our brains, right? And so in academic writing, analyses show how the arts and sciences produce works that we can measure and explore ourselves, right? Through the analytical process, we can determine meaning, right? context, subtext, right, and all these important factors that go hand in hand with learning, right, learning about ourselves, learning about the world around us. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please email. If not, enjoy the rest of the week and take care.